perfectly normal and natural for you to be who you are. Well, that who you are is the state that you're in. That's what that is. So it's perfectly natural for you to be the state that you're in. And sometimes it can take some time to fully align with a new state when casting off the old. Welcome back to another episode of Daily Neville. I am your host, Josiah Brandt, and Daily Neville is all about breaking down the teachings of Neville Goddard, making them easy to understand, easy to digest, easy to apply in 20 minutes or less. Usually, usually 20 minutes or less. This particular episode is going to go a little bit longer, and it's because these ideas are so rich. So let's go ahead and get started. Today, we're continuing with chapter five of Neville's book titled, Your Faith is Your Fortune. And this is picking up in the middle of the chapter. If you missed the beginning of this chapter, I encourage you to go back to the last episode of Daily Neville where we began this chapter. Let's go ahead and dive right in. We were talking about Neville's description as states of being, being garments that I, our formless, faceless self, wear. Our state of being even our desires, being garments, being clothes that the formless, faceless presence that we are wears. And so picking up with Neville's words, when you pray, believe that you have received and it shall be so. All things are possible to him who believes. Make the impossible possible through your belief and the impossible to others will embody itself in your world. We're going to start there. Make the impossible possible through your belief. All of the time, on a daily basis, we see world records being broken simply because people believe that they can. We see the mile being run faster and faster as time goes on by people who know that they can outrun the last person who set a world record. And this is done through their belief that it is possible. There really are no limitations that cannot be overcome through the power of belief. And this is what Neville means when he says, make the impossible possible through your belief. And the impossible to others, meaning those who do not possess that belief that it is possible, that which is not possible for them is possible for you and will embody itself in your world because you are giving it the right of birth through belief. Continuing with Neville's words, all men, have had proof of the power of faith. The faith that moves mountains is your faith in yourself. No man has faith in God who lacks confidence in himself. Your faith in God is measured by your confidence in yourself. I and my Father are one. Man and his God are one. Consciousness and manifestation are one. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. In the midst of all the doubts and changing opinions of others, let there be a conviction, a firmness of belief, and you shall see the dry land. Your belief will appear. The reward is to him that endureth unto the end. A conviction is not a conviction if it can be shaken. Your desire will be as clouds without rain, unless you believe. Your desire will be as clouds without rain, unless you believe. There will be a promise of fulfillment, but no actual fulfillment unless there is conviction, unless there is a firmament in the midst of the waters, unless you are solid and secure standing upon the dry land of your conviction and your belief. Conviction and belief really is what gives the right of birth to that which we desire to be. And it says, amidst all the doubts and changing opinions of others, how often do we allow others, the opinion of others, to sway our beliefs about what is possible for us? If we are to follow these teachings, we cannot allow this to happen. We must remain rooted in our own I am presence and our own I am awareness and our own belief in our own self-confidence, in our own possibility. This is why it says, close the door, go into secret. 
Remove all of the evidence of the senses. Don't speak about it with anyone else. Simply assume that you are from the core and presence of your own being. And this is the secret. This is the secret of giving your manifestations life because you are able to assume that conviction with power. You're able to stand in and upon it when you have this firm conviction, this firm belief. Your unconditioned awareness, Neville writes, or I am, is the Virgin Mary, who knew not a man, and yet, unaided by man, conceived and bore a son. Mary, the unconditioned consciousness, desired and then became conscious of being the conditioned state which she desired to express, and in a way unknown to others, became it. Go and do likewise. Assume the consciousness of that which you desire to be, and you too will give birth to your Savior. Don't need the help of any others. You don't need to ask anyone else for assistance, unaided by man. You can conceive and bear the birth of your desire. When the Annunciation is made, when the urge or desire is upon you, believe it to be God's spoken word, seeking embodiment through you. God's spoken word, seeking embodiment through you. One of Neville's famous sayings is that desire is a prophecy. Desire is God's spoken word, it is a prophecy, and it is seeking fulfillment. And when we allow ourselves to become the embodiment of the fulfillment, we are allowing ourselves to become the fulfillment of the prophecy. And thus, this makes desire a holy thing. Go and tell no man of this holy thing that you have conceived. Lock your secret within you and magnify the Lord. Magnify or believe your desire to be your Savior coming to be with you. When this belief is so firmly established that you feel confident of results, your desire will embody itself. So firmly established that you feel confident of results. You feel confident of results because you have that conviction in your belief, because you have confidence in God, which is measured by your confidence in yourself. And this also speaks to the state of being that you're in. As long as you're still trying to manifest something, you can be trying for a long time. You have to actually move states, move the energy to arrive at the state where you're not trying to do anything. You are confident of the result because you know who you are and you know the state in which you are embodied. And you can actually look at your state. You can actually self-evaluate. You can look in the mirror, what state am I in? And then understand based on the state that you are occupying that you have every right to be confident in the fulfillment of your desire because your desire and the state that you are occupying are aligned and are one. How it will be done, no man knows. I, your desire, have ways you know not of. My ways are past finding out. Your desire can be likened to a seed, and seeds contain within themselves both the power and the plan of self-expression. Now, this removes a tremendous amount of the burden from manifesting desires. We don't have to know where they come from. We don't have to know how it will be accomplished. We don't have to know how the bridge will be built. That part is not our job. The Father in me does the work, meaning that which is greater than the consciousness that I currently wear in the presence that I currently am in this limited human form the Father that is greater than that is doing the work. The consciousness that I am in doesn't have to. I just have to move states. That's my part of the bargain. That's my part of the job. Your consciousness is the soil that these seeds are planted within. These seeds are successfully planted only if, after you have claimed yourself to be and have that which you desire, you confidently await results without an anxious thought. Without an anxious thought. Now, this is where this idea of naturalness 
comes into play. Neville's about to speak about this idea of naturalness. When a desire feels natural to you to be outpictured, to have whatever it is that you desire to have, when it feels natural that you have that, whoever you're desiring to be, when it feels natural that you are that, that's that state of supreme self-confidence where you can confidently expect results without an anxious thought. It's perfectly normal and natural for you to be who you are. Well, that who you are is the state that you're in. That's what that is. So it's perfectly natural for you to be the state that you're in. And sometimes it can take some time to fully align with a new state when casting off the old. Not a whole lot of time, but sometimes it can take a little bit of time to become accustomed to it. And the greater the delta between the state that you were previously embodying and the new state that you are now embodying, sometimes the greater that gap it can take more energy, more focus, more intention to be able to bridge that gap in your consciousness. But once that is done, once that is complete, and you are confidently in the state, the results embody themselves, and it feels fully normal and natural, fully normal and natural to outpicture the results of your desire. And that's what Neville says in the next sentence. He says, if I be lifted up in consciousness to the naturalness of my desire. If I raise my consciousness to this place where having and being is completely natural and normal, I shall automatically draw the manifestation unto me. This is because the mirror of our reality is always reflecting back to us our state. So if we are lifting up our consciousness to the state of being, to the state where it is perfectly natural to have and to be, naturally the mirror is always going to show us a reflection of ourselves. Neville continues, consciousness is the door through which life reveals itself. Consciousness is always objectifying itself. To be conscious of being or having anything is to be or to have that which you are conscious of being or possessing. Therefore, lift yourself to the consciousness of your desire and you will see it automatically outpicture itself. To do this, you must deny your present identity. Let him deny himself. You deny a thing by taking your attention away from it. You're denying a thing by denying it access to your attention. Now, your attention is your life force energy, is the most valuable thing that you possess, that any of us possess, is our attention. And the value of our attention is that what we place upon it grows in the garden of our consciousness, the garden of God. So to deny a thing is to deny it that sap, that life force energy that causes a thing to grow, that vital energy. To deny that vital energy is to cause a thing to pass away. To drop a thing, Neville says, a thing, a problem, or ego from your consciousness you dwell upon God, God being I am. Be still and know that I am is God. Believe and feel that I am. Know that this knowing one within you, your awareness of being, is God. Close your eyes. Feel yourself to be faceless, formless, without figure. This is that state that Neville has described earlier in this book as floating, where you completely do that full refresh, that hard reboot, and you are disidentifying from your old identity completely, from any identity completely, and resetting. Approach this stillness, Neville says, as though it were the easiest thing in the world to accomplish. This attitude will assure your success. Even going to manifest the ease with which you are able to do this by simply believing and approaching it as though it were the easiest thing in the world to accomplish. And so it is. When all thought of problem or self is dropped from consciousness, because you are now absorbed or lost in the feeling of just being I am. Then, begin in this formless state 
to feel yourself to be that which you desire to be. I am that I am. The moment you reach a certain degree of intensity so that you actually feel yourself to be a new conception, this new feeling or consciousness is established and in due time will personify itself in the world of form. This new perception will express itself as naturally as you now express your present identity. To express the qualities of a consciousness naturally, you must dwell or live within that consciousness. Appropriate it by becoming one with it. To feel a thing intensely and then rest confidently that it is, makes the thing felt appear within your world. To feel a thing intensely, this implies a level of energy that is achieved by raising your consciousness to it, achieving it, and then a discharge that is this planting of the seed or the placing of the conception within the soil of your mind, which is the consciousness. So you feel it intensely. It's, it's not, in, according to what Neville's saying here, it's not just a passing thought. It's an intense feeling. You are exchanging energy for this thing. It's psychic energy, but an energy exchange nonetheless. You're feeling it intensely. And then once you've felt it intensely, you're resting confidently. This is the idea of the Sabbath. Once all of the work has been complete, which is the energetic work, you rest confidently, knowing that it is. And this, doing this, makes this thing appear within your world. I shall stand upon my watch and see the salvation of the Lord. I shall stand firmly upon my feeling, convinced that it is so, and see my desire appear. A man can receive nothing, no thing, except it be given him from heaven. Remember, heaven is your consciousness. The kingdom of heaven is within you. This is why you are warned against calling any man father, because your consciousness is the father of all that you are. Again, you are told, salute no man on the highway. See no man as an authority. Why should you ask man for permission to express when you realize that your world, in its every detail, originated within you and is sustained by you as the only conceptional center? Your whole world may be likened to a solidified space, mirroring the beliefs and acceptances as projected by a formless, faceless presence, namely, I am. This may be the key sentence of this entire chapter. There's a lot of great sentences in this chapter, but this, this idea, I really want to explore this idea. Your whole world may be likened to a solidified space mirroring your beliefs and your acceptances. Now, we talk a lot on this channel about your entire reality being a mirror to your state. When you look out at the world, all that you see is yourself reflected back to you, meaning your state, yourself, the state that you're in, the state that you're occupying is a filter placed over your eyes. So whatever you're seeing when you're looking out is literally the effects of the filter. And that's why you have the ideas that you have about what the world is, about what other people are, about what you are, about what is possible for you, about what your limitations are. These are your beliefs and your acceptances of what is true. Now, what Neville is saying here is that this world or this reality is a space solidified that is mirroring the beliefs and acceptances that are projected by you and more precisely, the I am that is within you. This is also related to that idea of I am the light of the world. Other authors have talked about this idea of the faceless, formless presence being a bright light, like a projector, and our ideas and beliefs being layered over this projector so that the lights coming from the projector projected through the beliefs, the filters, 
And then whatever we see on the blank screen of space is actually the overlay of our state, which are these filters placed over, I am the light of the world. Neville says, reduce the whole to its primordial substance and nothing would remain but you, a dimensionless presence, the conceiver. Meaning, if you take everything that you can perceive in this reality and you reduce it to its primordial substance or really what source is, all would disappear and all that would remain would be you, a dimensionless presence, the conceiver, and more precisely, the I am that is within you because all these identities, even your association with this human form would completely disappear. All that would be left is a presence and awareness. Neville says, the conceiver is a law apart. Conceptions under such law are not to be measured by past accomplishments or modified by present capacities. For, without taking thought, the conception, in a way unknown to man, expresses itself. What does Neville mean by this? The conceiver is a law apart. There is a popular uh, disclaimer, risk disclaimer, in the financial world that says, Past results are not necessarily indicative of future performance. It's exactly what Neville is saying, but he's applying it to the law of consciousness. He says, whatever you believe, whatever you perceive as having been possible for you in the past does not limit what is possible for you now. And whatever you perceive as being your present capacities, oh, I can probably do this based on whatever the evidence of you know, my senses are. That also is not a metric for what is possible for you. He says, without taking thought, meaning without thinking about what is likely or rational or logical or any of those things, without taking thought, the conception in a way that is unknown to you expresses itself because the conceiver is a law apart. It is apart from these laws that govern ordinary reality. The conceiver is apart from that because the conceiver is the primordial substance behind and beneath all of that. Neville says, go within secretly and appropriate the new consciousness. Appropriate is, he says this word a lot, appropriate the state. This is give it to yourself, using your own discretion, using your own power of self-determination, appropriate it. Grant your own wish, be your own wish granter. Feel yourself to be it and the former limitations shall pass away as completely and as easily as snow on a hot summer's day. You will not even remember the former limitations. They were never a part of this new consciousness. This rebirth Jesus referred to when he said to Nicodemus, you must be born again, was nothing more than moving from one state of consciousness to another. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that I will do. This does not mean to ask in words, pronouncing with the lips the sounds God or Christ Jesus. For millions have asked in this manner without results. To feel yourself to be a thing is to have asked for that thing in his name. This is because in his name, whatever you ask in my name, so name means nature. So whatever you ask in the nature of the I am consciousness, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, and no man comes to the Father except through me. That was Jesus's claim. So he says, whenever you ask in my name, which is my nature, which is the nature of I am, which is the root, the cause, awareness of being, whatever you ask for through assuming yourself to be, that's asking in the name. Asking by assuming yourself to be is asking in the nature Millions have asked simply by saying the name God or Christ Jesus, but that's not what this means. It actually means to do it in the nature. And I am is the nameless presence. Neville says, to feel yourself to be rich is to ask for wealth in his name. To feel yourself to be rich is to ask for wealth in the nature of I am. I am rich. 
That is me asking for wealth in the nature of I am. I am is unconditioned. It is neither rich nor poor. It is not strong nor weak. In other words, in him there is neither Greek nor Jew, bond nor free, male nor female. These are all conceptions or limitations of the limitless and therefore names of the nameless. These are just delusions is what Neville is saying. These are just illusions. So how easy is it to choose one illusion over another? It's just as simple as it sounds. To feel yourself to be anything is to ask the nameless I am to express that name or nature. Ask whatsoever you will in my name by appropriating the nature of the thing desired. And I, the I that I am, will give it unto you. A powerful chapter here from Neville titled, Who Am I? Really exploring the identity of the source that is within each of us and how to claim it, how to use it, how to ask in the nature, how to be, how to assume the garment, how to clothe ourselves in the garment of our desires. That's all for this episode of Daily Neville. In the next, we will move on to the chapter titled, I Am he. Until then, imagine wisely, my friends, and I'll see you in the next.